Hey everybody, it's another day and another way for today's talk with Marty G. And I am Marty G. And today I have with me Amy Blatnick. She is a blogger, author, woman of all seasons, and she donates her poo. <laughs> That's an inside story. We're just going to, I had to laugh because we we're talking off camera. Amy, hello, welcome. I'm glad to have you with us today. How are you? I'm great. It's a great day. It's beautiful today. Yeah, beautiful here. I'm actually in California right now. You're in Cali. Well, is that where you live? No, I live in Eugene, but okay. uh, we're visiting. You're visiting in Cali. Okay, so calling me from Cali, that's awesome. I like it when I get like across the border today's talk. <laughs> so thanks for joining me. I mean, this is really kind of cool because I get new friends like every once in a blue moon. Mm. And this is really kind of bizarre because like, we're not really truly connected. You just kind of just came out of nowhere. I just like found you. You just like found me. Yeah, like that. So I'm really kind of okay. curious. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to save this for the talk because you kind of fascinate me because mm -hmm. I just kind of look at some of your work and some of the things that you do and I don't want to steal all the thunder. So tell me what you do. Share with my audience, share with everybody. What do you do? Because I found it fascinating. Well, I've worn a lot of hats, so I do a lot of things. And I think yes. I told you in my write-up that I call myself a gig economist now, which means yes. I'm, kind of an, I'm kind of an economic opportunist. Okay. And okay. Uh, so, and the way that I navigate there is by passion. So I just do what I love to do, and I trust. I've always trusted that the universe would support support me if I do that. If I stay with inspiration, intuition, and passion, that that somehow I don't know that if this works for everybody, but when I made that shift in my life, uh, it really I felt the the wind of the universe under my wings. I, I like that, and that's for me. <laughs> and that does work. I mean, if I always truly believe it's like I say, you know, Marty G E G E E. The E E is energy and enthusiasm. Many people don't know that. Mm -hmm. I am kind of a spaz. But it's just truly, I mean, I'm a, I'm a big uh, Canfield supporter. I was like, I love the man. But mm -hmm. the reality is I truly believe you manifest a lot of things when you just are enthusiastic about the things you want to do, right? Yes, exactly. So where are you from originally? I was born in Manhattan, and I grew okay. up in the suburbs of New York. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. So from left coast to right coast, or right coast to left coast, I guess, depending on which way you're holding the map. Right, right. <laughs> so right coast to left if you're holding the right mm -hmm. way. I'm kind of uncommon and unconventional. So what made you come c across the country? You know, um, the East Coast was always a little dense for me. And um, I just felt like I was like kind of uh, pulling my arrow and shooting it and then following it. So okay. I guess even when I was young, I kind of, I never thought that I would stay in that area. I just always knew that like you graduate high school, you go to college, and then you go make a life somewhere. And that's right. just the way that I expected to live. So I just did that. I just, and and it felt like the Pacific Northwest felt peaceful to me. It felt more open. It felt more more natural, less horn honking. Definitely less, less horn honking. Giving each other the finger on the highway, <laughs> you know, just a little bit friendlier. I never more, understood the horn honking in New York. It's like, Cars don't move. It's like everybody's right. playing on the horn, but nothing's moving. What and is that? Back they're going to go. You can see that they're behind another car. So. Yeah, it's like nobody's going anywhere. It's like, I don't get it. <laughs> so, you all let's see, also, let's see, um, for 28 years, you've also been um, what is it, a self self employed production potter. What does yes. that mean? So when I, when I went to college, I'll just give you a little bit of the trajectory. I went okay. to college. I was like, in high school, I was most likely to succeed, you know, that I would win that pretty regularly every year, most likely to succeed. You were that kid. I was that kid. And okay. so, you know, I was, you know, I pushed myself hard in high school. And so I thought I should be a doctor because I thought that that's what you do if you get good grades and you're most likely to succeed. Success right. to me meant that you become a doctor. I don't know. I was class you. clown. You were? Yeah. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> I was friends with the class clowns. Oh, well, we're going to get along great. Of course, of course. <laughs> so, uh, so I went to college thinking I was going to be pre-med. Mm -hmm. And then I just had 
several different things happened to me that shook me up enough that uh, just rattled me basically to my soul, to my bones. And I had a couple of uh, really big eye-opening experiences and I realized that I wasn't doing what I just said I do, which is following my passion and following right. what's, what's true for me inside, my deepest wishes, not what I, not to impress the world. I think I was always an impressor. I just right. wanted to impress everybody and that would create some safety for me. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then when I realized like that was, I was living my life for other people. Then I changed and I, all of a sudden I was like, talk about arriving at the party. I, I realized that if I wanted to have a fun life, I really could, you know, right. Right. Do all kinds of fun things if I wanted to. And so I went, you know, from, you know, kind of mainstream success to completely outside the off, market. You, you totally went off the grid. <laughs> yeah. And so I was like, okay, what do I really want to do? And so I, 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 first of all, I took much different classes in college, but I really got involved in pottery. I just loved pottery. Mm -hmm. And I, I wanted to either do that or some kind of like construction. Like I thought maybe I'd go to a boat building school or something like that wow, okay. or, or build houses, you okay. know, with Habitat for Humanity or something. But anyway, I wound up getting a job for $4 an hour, maybe $4.25, 4 or $4.25 an hour uh, doing pottery, production nice. pottery. So I moved to Texas with my cat and my dog. And, um, and then I did this hardcore pottery training. I was working 60 hours a week at the wheel, just wow. at the wheel, just throwing pots. Wow. Um, and, and this was like production pottery. You're trying to get, you know, every single piece to like look exactly the same. You weigh out every single so piece. So this was not like the movie Ghost at all. There was no Patrick Swayze moments and any yeah. none of that. I did fall in love when I was there, you know. I mean, oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. There was definitely love in the studio. But, okay. but, okay. but yes, I mean, it, it, it's more, it was more like. <clears throat> it okay. was like kind of hardcore. I was there with many men. It was just me and the rest of the throwers were all men. Okay. So um, I guess we could we could make up a fantasy about how that could be sexy. But yes, we really. can. That'll be another <laughs> show. That'll be the late night show, folks. Late night show. <laughs> just <to> everybody knows. <laughs> And so then from there, I moved up here and uh, started a life as a potter. And I just kept following my nose. And I um, eventually, you know, pottery is very earthy. It's very muscular. It's very physical. You're carrying a lot of things, you know, big boxes of pots to shows, big, you know, 50-pound boxes of clay here and there, mm -hmm. big buckets full of glaze. It's a kind of a physically demanding job. Not yeah. kind of. It's if you're a production potter, it's a physically demanding job. So then I uh, needed something. So basically, else. you're telling me you got a rock and bod. I well, I was. I used to be really strong. I believe I to, it. Especially my upper body. You my gotta upper be, body yeah. got like. You can throw yeah. a man halfway across the room if they say something wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, yeah, I am pretty strong. <laughs> I'm also very small. I'm, I'm not even five feet. Oh my gosh. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, then I found this uh, movement practice called Nia. And Nia. that was pleasure-based okay. movement. It was about moving to feel pleasure and experience pleasure and joy in the body and about self-healing as you move. So it was okay. a great complement to pottery, which was very kind of, uh, it was like, you're either here or there. You know, there's not a lot of variety when you're sitting at the wheel. You're pretty much mm -hmm. in one position all the time. And so Nia was amazing. And then all of a sudden there was a lot of up and freedom and movement and moving my body in all different kinds of ways and getting out of habits. And, and so I added that. So then I was a potter and a Nia teacher. Wow. Yeah. And then, uh, I, it's a little bit of a longer story, but I wound up getting fascinated with a modality called process work. Which yeah, is, I was seeing this because you had process-oriented psychology. So I, I will tell you, straight-up confession, because I'm, I'm a student of communication, okay? And so there's always this war that I wage myself. It's it's a one-man war that I wage against students of psychology because okay. they, they stole the science from, from communication. Because it's like every time I go to a psychologist or a therapist or someone who's been through that discipline, it's always about talk therapy and it's always about things in communication. I'm like... Uh, and then, or I talk to someone who's been to a psychologist and they say, well, 
That's what my therapist said. Like, they make all this money off of things that I already know. It's not mm. fair just because I didn't go to psych school. So maybe mm. you know something different. So I want to hear what this process-oriented psychology is. This is new to yeah. me. Yeah, process work is... Um... It's not talk therapy, first of all. I mean, you can talk, but we do all kinds of things. It's multi-channeled is what we say. So okay. it's, so it kind of depends on the on the client, you know, but people like you can see as I'm talking, I'm moving around a lot. Yeah. And so I'm a movement person. If I were to sit down with a process work therapist, they'd probably start moving too. And pretty soon we'd be dancing and my process would just kind of come out of the <laughs> dance. So it's, uh, it's, it's really about... Uh, letting things happen, you know, taking, taking the lids that we put on ourselves, And we learn this from when we're really young, be this oh, yeah. way, don't be that way. But this still. is acceptable. That's not acceptable. Right. But what if we were to value all parts of ourselves and all parts of each other and all parts of society? You know, what if we were to say, everybody gets a seat at the table. We want to know what, what are your thoughts? What are your beliefs? What are your feelings? What, what do you need to express that you haven't been expressing this whole time? And these things, as much as we try to push them down, um, it's like, you know, like plants are strong, you know, they, they yeah. find the crack in the concrete and they come out and mm -hmm. same thing with behaviors and beliefs and all that. And people, you know, we can try, I can try really hard to be a nice girl. I've been trying yeah. to be a nice girl my whole life, but like I disturb people all the time with the things I say, because it's not possible for me to just completely repress. Right whatever that other stuff is that I think is anything that's not the nice girl. Okay, so so it's going to come out sooner or later. It comes out some yeah. way, either in your dreams, it comes out in body symptoms, it comes in your relationship problems. You know, it's going to, it's going to come out somewhere or everywhere. Gosh, I should, I need to send my wife to you because she, maybe she needs some process work. She's a Libra. She loves the stuff. Uh -huh. Everything is fine. Everything is oh. okay. No, not a big deal. Whatever. I'm like, mm. oh, come on. Let <laughs> you don't it, buy it out. For a second. You don't she buy has it. all these like physical conditions. And I'm like, yeah, well, if you would just rant and rave just once, right? you might be okay. Just let it out. It's all oh. coming inside and eating you alive. Aww. I'll probably send her to you. I think I need to. I think I need to recommend. It's great Definitely. that she's got you, who is encouraging of that instead of reinforcing, you know, whatever. Yeah. Well, she down. believes that. Her family thinks I'm a nut, but that's pretty much <laughs> everybody thinks I'm a nut because they just see the outside. They don't see. The inside. <laughs> I'm like an onion. I have I layers. Outside. I'm like Shrek. I'm like a big black Shrek. <laughs> That's what the world needs is a big black Shrek for sure. <laughs> Lots of them. Take over the world, please. Yes, they do. My gum. That'll take care of our freaking problem. You see yes, a big black will. Shrek get out of a car before the cop pulls him over. I think that would get a lot of that nasty stuff. <laughs> now, I'm also curious because I saw this. You, you've written a book on your dating experiences. And it's time. Can mm -hmm. I be honest with you? What yeah. prompted you to put your dating experiences to paper? Because mm. that, to me, I mean, just the word dating, just that word itself gives me um, all kinds of ill feelings in my belly. Yeah. So I'm trying to imagine what made you I want feel to nervous, to too, just even talking about it. Yeah, yeah. So tell me, mm -hmm. what made you want to put that into writing? So I, uh, well, first of all, I was in a 10-year relationship. Before I was in my 10-year relationship, I considered myself a serial monogamist. So I didn't yeah. want to have long-term relationships. I wanted to have chapters. I wanted to have a very colorful life. Like I said, I like to follow my passions and be spontaneous and inspired. So I wanted to have lots of different love experiences. And you know how falling in love is so fun, you know? It is. Right? Isn't it? I wanted oh to keep gosh. doing that. I wanted to keep 100%. falling in love. I am like yeah. such a stupid romantic. It's stupid yeah like, even at this age it just doesn't stop i this is a secret between you me and anybody watching i am a romantic <laughs> still today mm. Silly. <laughs> so because of that i never wanted to have a really long-term relationship i didn't want to get married i was completely traumatized by my parents divorce and i didn't believe in marriage i thought it was it wasn't going to work for me it didn't seem like so right. uh so then I got into a long-term relationship. We had a family. I had a woman partner. I had a daughter. She had two daughters, all five of us living in the house. It was heaven and hell all together somehow. You know, it was beautiful and it was impossible. And we, um, 
Anyway, we don't need to talk about my family. But when I got <laughs> out of that 10 year relationship, I was like in my mid 40s. I was like, okay, this is my last chance. Who knows? I could be like, you know, skin hanging on the floor in 10 years. You know, right. I don't know how fast I'm aging here. And I'm going to like, I got to go, I have to go experience life. There's things I don't want to miss out on. You know, I wanted to experience more love, more romance, more sex, all kinds more of sex. Yeah, I definitely. went back to the variety, back to the variety. Yeah. So, Cause something tell, they keep saying the older you get, you have to be more mature and then you can't have the, like the high school stuff. And I'm like, why? Mm -hmm. That's always been my thing. It's like, I always get this feeling, okay, so now all of a sudden I'm, I'm, I'm like a dirty old man or something because I still think that way. It's like, that's ridiculous. No, they don't understand Black Shrek. They, right? Yeah. Thank you. They don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Finally, I found someone in my paradigm. tribe. It's oh, my gosh. Paradigm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank so you. So I, so I was so excited to go dating and I was like, I am not committing to anybody for a long time. Like no monogamous commitments. I like, I decided to forget that serial monogamy started to, went from three years to 10 years. That's too much. Um, I'm, I'm gonna, not going to be monogamous. I'm going to be polyamorous or, or at least non-monogamous. I decided yeah. I, I need to own my sexuality. I need to be in charge. I need to be a sovereign sexual being. And so many people have a hard time understanding polyamory. That that drives me crazy because polyamory, oh, you mean you're a swinger? No, it's not the same thing as swinging. I'm no, sorry. No, polyamory is not swinging. Right, right. Yeah, there's so many different versions. And each, it seems like even within like a polyamorous community, different people or couples or throuples or whatever, they all do yeah, it differently. They do. So everybody gets to decide what that means for them. Exactly, exactly. Gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Where have you been? Holy cow. Yeah. Here we are. <laughs> so anyway, so you wrote this well, book based on that. Well, so then I went on a date, right? I had to start okay. my dating experiences. Yes. I was all ready. I went on a date. It was like torture. It was so hard. It was completely oh impossible. It was my first date of my life, I think, except for maybe one or two little things, but my right. first dating phase of my life. And I just like, I, I had a really hard time just speaking my truth on this date with this stranger. And I don't know if that's what happens for you in your stomach when we talk about dating, but for me, um, it happens in my jaw. I feel it right away in my jaw and things start like seizing up. Like, oh my yeah. gosh. I'm for me, it's like, me. can you just get to the real you as soon as humanly yes. possible? Yeah, I'm not good at small talk. I'm yes. not good at the, I, I don't like wasting BS conversations. I just want to get to the meat. Yes. And many people are not ready to get to the meat of a conversation as quickly as I am. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh my God, that's too overwhelming. And I'm like, well, it overwhelming? It's just a conversation. And I, mm -hmm. especially, oh my God, don't let a conversation get sexual too quickly. It's mm -hmm. like, it's not about probability. I'm not talking probability. I'm mm -hmm. saying possibility. Uh -huh, if uh -huh. we can't talk possibility, then why even talk about it at all? I'm right. not talking about, okay, right after this dinner, we're hitting a hotel room. That's uh -huh, not the point uh -huh. of the conversation. Uh -huh. But if we can't even talk in those terms, then right. there's no reason to go any further. That's my right. point. You're not my type, right? You're not my type. If you can't talk about this, you're not if my you type. If you can't talk we're, about we're it, why even do it? We're done. <laughs> I mean, and for me, that makes total sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. I always felt much more comfortable with people who were open about talking about sexual things and uh, it gives you an idea, you know, of if you are a good match or not. And, yeah. and I understand it when people have a hard time because of that repression thing. We've all been conditioned, you know, sex is like a four letter word, you know, yeah. like nobody knows how to talk about it. You people don't. don't know how to talk about it and it's not our fault, you well, know. Yeah. We need to come up with education and, and more places so we can be at, at peace with our own sexuality, with sexuality in general. And well, it, this is it. my thought. It's, it drives me crazy because our world gets more and more advanced. We have all these different ways to connect. There's all this technology. Everything keeps going at the speed of sound. Mm -hmm. But the rules and the laws that govern interaction on a human scale are archaic. They don't they don't expand. They don't develop. It's still the same old stuff. Yeah. And everybody has the same archaic rules around them and what you can or should or shouldn't say or what you should or shouldn't do. I'm like, my, my question is always, it says who? 
Mm-hmm. Well, you shouldn't say that on the first date. Says who? Says who? Yeah. <laughs> no, that I'm not supposed to do that. Says who? <laughs> right. Right. But yeah. it doesn't change. And nobody's changing. It drives me nuts. So I wouldn't well, want to date. we will. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was fun. It's fun to be the person to kind of like eventually to open things up, you know, to be yeah. the comfortable one. If you can develop certain skills. So when you go on the date, at least you're comfortable. So if that person's uncomfortable, you can kind of host that's how I got to be is like, I was, I felt like I was a dating host by the end of my mm-hmm. dating time is that I was like, okay, this is how I do it. You know, this, this, and this, you know, and, and just as much as I could, just exactly like what you're saying, like just being transparent, like there's nothing to fake. There's nothing to hide. There's nothing. You can't trick somebody on a, if you tricked somebody on a first date to thinking you were like way better than you actually are by all your nervousness and hiding and, and conniving and yeah. you know, grip that you brought with you to say on your date, uh, they're not going to get to know the real you. And, you know, if you go on two or three more dates or wind up living together, like eventually they're going to find out the real you, you know, we can't exactly. hide who we are. We can't, we can't change who we, I mean, not we that can. we can't grow, but you we know, we can always asking, grow and develop, but we're always going to be intrinsically who we are. Always. Yeah. yeah. Always. And you can feel that from a person. Even if they're nervous, you can feel their essence. You know, we can't, you know, you can put up as, put on as much makeup as you want. You can wear the fanciest jewels. You can, you know, speak in a certain way, but like your, our essences shine through. And so Absolutely. it's not so hard to sense for chemistry. It's pretty, it's pretty available. I think it's pretty tangible. Mm-hmm. For so me. now you you also work as a coach, right? So you do yeah. coach people. Yeah. And there's a big difference between coaching and therapy. I try yes. to tell people there's a big difference because I, mm-hmm. I used to be a relationship coach and I would tell people, mm-hmm. if you're expecting me to be this huggy, touchy, feely, oh, let's just talk and hug and let me write some things down and we'll talk next week. Uh-huh. That's not what I do as a coach. I'm going to hold you accountable to the things you said you're going to do. Nice. So if you're not going to do it, then don't tell me you're going to do it. Right. So I want to make sure I find a way to help you. What's a good way? I mean, I'm sure people listening to this going, this is probably one of the wildest shows Marty's had. Ooh. So I'm curious about how to get a hold of this lady. Mm. What should I do? How, how can we help you? Is there, are you looking for, for any referral work? I mean, how do people get a hold of you? What, what can we do to help you? You know, right now I'm really into my book. I'm really okay. into being a writer. Uh, okay. If people want to be involved with, me in some way they can go to my website and get on my email list and uh i'm gonna be um so i'm uh creating a dating app it's a dating game app so or dating ga- yeah dating game app so it's a it's a card game basically that you have on your phone uh that you can play on a date to make it easier it's like a facilitation cool, like an icebreaker for honesty yeah honesty. nice i yeah, like that just a true or false kind of like you know a card comes up and it's like I'm not ha- really having fun. It's like, oh, thank God, I couldn't say that. But the- <laughs> guess what? There's the truth. I'm not really having fun. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's a great idea. You totally should do that. That yeah. rocks. Yeah, I yeah. I really love it. So I, so I have a lot of things that I want to produce and give away and um, maybe eventually sell and and my uh-huh. book, and there's my logo. I'm so happy with that logo. It was the Great same. logo. Does it have some meaning behind it? Yeah, you know, it's it's the same swirl pretty much that I used a lot on my pottery. I don't have any of my pottery here, but that was my, okay. main, my main profession for like almost 30 years as I was a professional potter. Okay. And, uh, and I used that swirl and then I was like, oh, I want that swirl to be my logo, my pottery swirl. And when I looked it up, it was hard for me to find it, first of all, and it's mm-hmm. called the double spiral, and it's about uh, bringing the physical and the spiritual into balance. It's like the combination of the physical and the spiritual. When I looked up the meaning of it, but I've been using that symbol forever. And you didn't even know what it meant before you act. That's kind of cool. So yeah. I think it found you, didn't it? Yeah, we found each other. We yeah. found each other. Yeah. So. Well, okay, so I guess the best way to get a hold of you is through your website, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Just to reach out to you there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a contact, like if people had specific questions or also on Facebook, I'm on Facebook. And uh, yeah, I'm going to be doing a few big book launch parties. Um, 
with giveaways and readings and signed copies towards the the launch of the book is at the end of may so I'm okay okay a big pre-launch period right now and that's the can i be honest with you book yeah that's okay the book. great yeah. i have the one and only copy right here the oh world. there's only one copy one right copy. Here. Yeah. Well, I definitely <laughs> want to sign a copy of it. I'll be on that awesome. list. I will be there for sure. Yeah. So do you have any parting thoughts, anything to share with us before we go? <sighs> well, like I said, the book is called Can I Be Honest With You? And if I were to just give the listeners one gift, it would be that line that you can always have that that line in your pocket for when you need to shift up the dynamics of a conversation when it's not going your way. And maybe like my logo, one of your thoughts is spiraling this way and the other one's spiraling a different way. A way to kind of come in back into your center is that using that word, can I be that, that line, can I be honest with you? And it somehow it, it paves a, a gentle field for, for the truth to be sown. And, uh, and I think that it brings people closer together, like you were saying before, like what happened to our communication skills? Why have we evolved in technology, but not in interpersonal relationships yeah, and yeah. communication and peace, you know, yeah. peace. Yeah. So can I be honest with you? Ask it to it. ourselves, ask it to each other. I love it. Thank you so much, Amy. I really appreciate you taking the time to sit with me today. Yeah. Great getting to know you. I think we're going to get to know each other over time. I feel Let's hang out. I feel like friend. I yes. think you're part of my tribe. I think there was yes. a reason why we came together. Yeah. So thank you very much for taking the time, folks. Um, I'll put all Amy's contact information in the comments if you'd like to be a guest on my show. This wasn't too painful, was it? It was, it was awesome. Okay. Went by like that. Whoosh. All right. So thanks a lot, folks. Amy, thank you for being here. Have a safe trip back from Cali. Thanks. And I will talk to you again soon. Say goodbye. Great. Bye, everybody. Bye, Marty. Bye-bye. Thank you. Hey, feel I'm in the mood for a switch up. I hit the function, hit the rose till I hiccup. I hit the stage and leave with money that's a sticker. She picture perfect, so I told him I'm